If Spider-Man had the ability to kill, I swear he'd be one of the most dangerous superheroes to ever live. Because in several instances where Spidey is either mind-controlled or a zombie at times, Spidey will just rip apart his villains like paper mache. My favorite moment in one of these circumstances is when Doc Ock, while controlling Spider-Man's body, punches Scorpion so hard in the face that his jaw comes clean off and it just leaves Otto thinking that Spider-Man could have killed him at any given moment throughout his entire crime-fighting career. But luckily for the villains of the Marvel Universe, Spider-Man has a strict no-killing policy. However, what a lot of people don't know, and myself included for a long time, is that Spider-Man has actually taken a life before in Spider-Man vs. Wolverine. During the story, Spider-Man and Wolverine are on a Black Ops mission because of a woman called Charlemagne, but things go terribly south as they start to fight each other. And while Spidey, on high alert, fighting Wolverine, his spider sense goes off and Spider-Man acts on it instantaneously, throwing a nasty punch. However, the punch doesn't hit Wolverine, but instead Charlemagne, and she dies in Wolverine's arms, forever changing Spidey. As her death would haunt his nightmares and measure in the same guilt Peter had, for the death of Gwen Stacy. Man, Peter can't catch a break. But out of all of that pain, he still gets up and fights evil as Spider-Man. But what if something changed just a little bit to divert Peter's path in life completely? What if all events up to Charlemagne's death went the exact same, but everything afterwards was different? What if Peter never went back home to New York? Aren't you the guy who's been telling me to go home because I'm in over my head? You were right. I'm going home. However, Logan would show Peter Charlemagne's sister, Alex, who had been supposedly kidnapped, thus sparking hope in Peter that by saving her, he could redeem himself. So next thing, Spider-Man and Wolverine drop from an attack helicopter together. While Nebo, the man flying the helicopter, clears a path for the heroes, with Spider-Man still a little apprehensive on the killing part of the mission. Are you trying not to kill them? Well, yeah, I am. They're trying to kill you. Yeah, they are. Out of nowhere, a woman controlling a tornado starts to pull Wolverine and Spider-Man, while Wolverine remarks that they have mutants of their own on sight before getting pummeled to the ground. Spider-Man then leaps towards Crimson Dynamo to break his armor, but hurts himself in the process. Soon after this, Crimson Dynamo would start hitting Spider-Man over and over again as Spider-Man would beg him to stop until Wolverine would cut the suit's power off, causing Spider-Man to hit Crimson Dynamo's head so hard that his neck would snap due to his armor shutting down. And through their combined efforts, Spider-Man would web up the woman causing the blizzard, with Wolverine to deal the finishing blow from behind. After killing the supers, it'd be like a walk in the park for the heroes to save Alex and escape. And after saving Alex, Spider-Man would decide to stay in Europe and become a disciple of Nebo, learning to hone all of his skills to become the best. Until he ended up becoming the absolute best, sensing threats even before they could happen. Peter would even ditch Mary Jane for Alex and have a long-lasting relationship with her. And with his skills growing along with his reputation, Black Widow tried to take Spidey on, but to Spidey, it was as if a warrior were fighting a child. Over time, Spidey also riled up a lot of groups in Russia by going on several Black Ops missions to make the world a better place, enough so to cause another Cold War. Killing corrupted officials, intergang, and even double agents working for S.H.I.E.L.D. They'd pretty much blow up half of Russia with Spider-Man as their leader, causing the Doomsday Clock to reach the brink. But after a while, Nick Fury along with S.H.I.E.L.D. had to do something about Spider-Man, so they would capture Nebo and learn of Spidey's next mission in Zargoza, which would turn out to be an ambush set up by the Russian government. So while over in Zargoza, the three of them are collecting info until both Wolverine and Spidey send something off, as bullets would start raining down upon them, finding themselves in the middle of an ambush, leaving them with no other choice than to have to fight their way out together. You're mine. Webs. <laughs> You're right. After killing several soldiers brutally, it starts to look bad with no way out in sight, until a shield helicarrier is spotted above them, demanding everyone to drop their weapons, while the three of them don't know what will happen next. With Nick Fury dragging Nebo out to the Russian operatives to make a trade-off, giving Russia Nebo, also known as the Rook. In exchange, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Alex get off scot-free. Wolverine then realizes that Spider-Man somehow set the whole thing up to clear their names, and for that, Nebo says aloud that Spider-Man is truly his greatest student. After the exchange, Alex would give Nick Fury their rates as hired assassins, while Peter would request Black Widow to give Mary Jane a letter for him as to say goodbye forever. And with that, Alex, Wolverine, and Spider-Man would go on to make the world a safer place, one dead body at a time, ending the story.
I hope you guys like this story, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.